This is Daidi's Bicolor. And um, it's a very popular, at least in Northern California, very popular perennial grass. And it's evergreen. And um, it's not actually a grass, but a grass-like perennial. And uh, it has this nice flower. And it's one of the features that people are most familiar with. It's got this y yellow flower with kind of a black and orange uh, spot on three of the petals. And these occur a good part of the year, at least where we are in Northern California, a hot inland valley. Um, and they have, I I've seen some in August were really doing a big flush on their growth cycle. I mean their bloom cycle. But what the thing that has a large bearing on that is when the maintenance company is pruning these or when the homeowner is doing that. And I'm showing you a situation here and I'm going to cover it a bit with commercial because this is so heavily used in our area uh, by commercial landscape architects that I think it's important to cover this. Um, I think singular plants like this one here are a really nice use around water or um, just where you want this nice strong texture and uh, especially if you have a windy area where you take advantage of the way this moves in the wind. Um, but it, it, it's kind of a challenging plant to know how to maintain. When you see these looking the way these do, uh, this is really the ideal. Uh, it's entirely green, there's no dead fronds or leaves on there and um, the plant just really looks good. But I'm gonna show you shortly um, how uh, maintenance companies treat these and why they're a little more challenging than these would uh, lead you to believe. Um, you can t this plant that we're looking at here is approximately five feet wide and three feet tall. And that's pretty much the standard for that. Although when they're planted in groupings, I would say typically they're planted about 42 inches on center is probably a good spacing and they'll fill that in within a couple of years. What they do is the basal clump uh, divides and spreads like you see here and um, that's how the plant reproduces itself. So I'm going to go and look at the other ones that uh, have been cut back and I want to get into the challenge. Now if you live in a cold winter area like we do, we get down in the 20s, um, these can get some burn on them if we get really low 20s. Some of these leaves will start to burn. The problem becomes is how do you clean them up because only a fraction of the leaves will burn and what happens is is it's hard to get in and clean those out and still have the plant look good. So typically what maintenance companies do is they hack the entire plant down as low as they can. And um, well again I'll look at that in a moment and you'll see what I'm talking about. Here's a median island where they use Daedes by color and uh, you can see that these were cut back and they're starting to grow out of it. We'll just take a closer look at uh, what these look like once they've been cut back. And you can see that the edges of the plant are all chewed down and they're starting to grow out of it. But you get this, this dead thatch in here that's really hard to get rid of. Uh, the last group that we looked at that looked good, they had cut the plant probably down to about 3 or 4 inches. And these are probably 12 to 14 inches high. The problem is this is the middle of the growing season and this plant should look its best and instead the maintenance company has cut these back and has them looking pretty ratty um, here at the end of summer. So if you have any say in how these uh, Daedes bicolor are being managed, I would recommend that you have them cut them all the way to the ground. If you look at this group right here. They're beautiful, they're entirely green, there's none of that brown thatch at the bottom. And um, they must be cutting these all the way to the ground and also not doing it very often. Um, I don't see any signs of this having been cut back. So however they did it, um, there's no brown at all. So they must have cut them all the way down. And I would also suggest doing that 
probably in the spring after winter when any brown stuff that would occur because of frost has occurred and the plant has the entire growing season to grow out of that pruning. And that is Dietes bicolor. Also just wanted to address water. These are very drought resistant once they're established even in a hot inland valley and certainly near the coast. And, um, and the deer do not eat these. <clears throat> these have been used for a long time in deer areas and they consistently leave this plant alone.